The surface of the earth is 30% land and 70% water. A newborn baby is composed of 70% water and 30% everything else. I guess this means that life and water are inseparable. A human child at birth undergoes a ritual almost identical to that inflicted upon a trout at death. The fish is whacked on the head, thus putting it out of its misery. The infant is whacked on the behind thus initiating it into its misery. Upon my birth, my father made sure that I was given the proud, manly name of Augustine. And since I was born into the first family of angling, it should come as no surprise that I was a fishing prodigy. I caught my first steelhead with my mom on a worm when I was four. I didn't feel any hostility towards land dwellers. I just had water on the brain. The only thing I gave much thought to was bait versus fly. On my 10th birthday, I caught my 180th steelhead with my dad on a fly. By the time high school rolled around, I was great at attracting steelhead. Not so great with the cheerleaders. And when most kids were making college plans, I didn't bother. I figured the only institution my grades would get me in was the Oregon State Pen. But on water, I understand the way fish think. My parents' union is one of stubborn, extremely loyal, hot-tempered, polar opposites. Ma is a bait fisher, an expert plunker of worms. My father is a writer secondarily, and a famous fly fisherman primarily. My brother Bill Bob is different than the rest of us. He was born with a prodigious ability to ignore all things aquatic, which to a massive extent implies his entire family. He hates water, won't even drink it. He wears galoshes and a hat almost every day just to stay clear of the stuff. Not that he doesn't need a little protection from other hazards now and then. Good thing Ma has native intelligence, and she always seems to be in the right place at the right time. My father's battle with a giant steelhead he named Nijinsky was the stuff of legends. And the story of that fish brought him fame, fortune, and a healthy ego. 
Raised by English aristocrats, he inherited their speech and manners. When he autographs a book, he writes his entire name, Henning Hale Orveston. I call him H2O. He's the one person in the world who calls me by the name on my birth certificate. Augustine, best get another box from the car. Just brought in three boxes. Tell you what, Augustine. Until you find someone else to employ him, you might want to do what I request. Yes, sir. You have children? Yeah. <gasps> Before I take a few questions, let me conclude by saying I like to think of this legislation as the Worship the Waters Act. Yes, little lady. Hi. Um, curious. Uh, how can building all those new dams be an act of worship? I mean, even if the wild salmon are lucky enough to survive the turbines on their pilgrimage up the river, their smolt will be swallowed, of course, by the predators on their way back to the ocean. Maybe we should call it the Slaughter the Salmon Act instead. There may be some collateral damage to the salmon, but this will create jobs and cut taxes and... Besides, we are making great strides with aquaculture these days. You'd be amazed what we're doing with farm salmon. Miss, there's no smoking here. You need to put that out. Of course, the environment. Come on. Certainly. Let's go. Come on. There's no evidence that consuming farm salmon poses any threat. Yeah, you and I can debate that, but you and we can both agree that fish have better places to live than pools of their own shit! Where are my books, Augustine? My name is Gus. Come, 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 come. My parents argued about a lot of things, but it was never a question of who would have the last word, merely who would have the next one. How could I tell them I was thinking about leaving home when I couldn't even get a word in edgewise? cells recollecting it have been destroyed by this merciful beverage. So go ahead, Gusser. Tell them about that record bass you and Bill Bob pulled out of there that time. Uh, Augustine, you call yourself a fisherman? Well, I call myself Gus. Well, Gus, why were you fishing for bass? That Hines says that... That Hines is an idiot. What does he know? Bass. Bass. It's been said that a man with a Bible is more dangerous than a man with a gun. Isaac Walton's The Complete Angler was my father's Bible. The King of Fish, the trout. And since the time I was a toddler, I heard it quoted and misquoted daily. By the fly rod, the most aesthetically perfect experience available to mortal. Don't break my book. Come, let's kill them all. Then let's go 
will find an honest alehouse where we may drink a cup of barley wine and rejoice together. Completely mistaken him, you have taken his facetious humor and turned it into a moral condemnation. It shows a lack of sense of humor on your part. The trap is all that I leave out in this. What would you think of me if I named fly fish? You know what you are? You're a fishing fascist. You're a diarrhea of bigot who's blind to anyone who doesn't drool over the sound of your stupid, suave talk. The only person you've ever loved is yourself because you got your head so far up your own ass that you All don't right, see anyone else. Austin, there's no way to talk to your father. What in hell's gotten into you? You're a greedy, gloating shrew, and you don't know shit about fishing or living. Neither one of you do because you're just both dug so deep in your ruts that you've got mud in your ears. I gotta get out of here. See this? No, 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 that's not Jinsky. This is the source of all your bullshit. Nijinsky was an honored part of our family since before I was even born. And even though his body was stuck over the living room mantle, his spirit haunted every corner of my life. What can you say after you've spontaneously cremated your parents' prized fish in the fireplace? The only thing that came to my mind was goodbye. For me, Happiness would never be found anywhere but on the banks of a river anyway. So I took the few possessions I owned and turned to the river and to a new life devoid of every obstacle between me and my beloved art of angling.
There's just nothing like the feel of a trout dancing through the river. Making your pole pulse like a heart in your hands. It does to your hands what dreams of eternity do to your heart. And yet, I killed the trout. It's strange to kill your dance partner, but that's what I did. I did it because the world is strange. Because the world does not allow you to make up your own rules based on how you would wish things to be. Because this is a world where no matter who you are, your happiness, your survival, is based on sacrifice. Sweet, bleeding sacrifice. Nice work, son. Very nice. How many you got? About a hundred. I'll take them all. Uh, okay. Hey! Stop! Hey! Howdy there. Howdy. Hi. My name's Kearney. And, uh, this is Bernie and... Marlene and Charlene and Darlene, and this one right here is Ernie. Except we call him Hemingway for yeah. short, you know. <laughs> I'm Gus. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we know. You, you live right up there upstream, there by the reef forest. Hey, uh, maybe do you guys want some some fish, smoked fish? I got yeah. some. Yeah, 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 don't grab, don't grab. Well, you guys pick at that. I'm going to... Move on down the road. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. we got some stuff for you. We, just wait right here, wait right here. <laughs> hey, you like fishing? If you ever want a lesson or anything, you know, you can just come by my cabin. Here you go. Oh, whoa, wow. These are brand new, so they're really good. Wow, thank you. Okay, wow, okay. hello. There you go. Wow, uh, this is really, I don't, I Oh, can't no, 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 it's good, it's good. It's great. Good. You're fine. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gus. Ah, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice job, Rodney. Alfred, I promise I'll eat something else tomorrow.
One thing you can say about nature. If you make one lousy rule to describe it, it'll contradict you even if it has to bust its ass to do so. And so what? If anybody ever discovered the real laws of nature, nature would rear back and strike him dead before he could pass on the news. Jesus Christ. No. I think his name is Abe. Maybe Abe knew. Maybe he had just figured the whole world out and was about to tell me as I floated past. But God caught wind of it, stuck out his invisible foot, tripped, and drowned him. If the fool only knew how to swim. Titus. Titus Irving Gerard, at your service. Nice to me. I... Simply Gus. Simply Gus? I don't think so. Anyone who knows the secrets to the catches you made today is not simply anything. There's no secrets to those catches. The trout I caught on a wet fly, the corpse I caught on a soggy dry. Yes, well, you've done old Abe's family some service by collecting his remains. And since we're all bodily destined for corpsehood and spiritually possessed of immortal souls, I see no reason to let the proximity of corpses ruin our day. If you think we're all possessed by immortal souls, I'd sure like to see them. Maybe you're looking in the wrong places. Fisherman is dead. Everyone I know will one day be dead. What can I do about it? Death is the most natural thing there is, and we all have a knack for it. The only question is when we'll master it. it doesn't matter what we do or what we don't do. This is no passing thought. The gnawing emptiness more real than the cold. Baby rabbit 
nice tree fee. Yep. Had to get a new one. Whatever helps you sleep, Bill Bob. Gussie? Bill Bob? I thought it might make you feel better to explain that you've got a guardian angel. You mean guardian angel? Nah. See, you think you're alone, but you're not. You've got a guardian angel. That's your twin. <laughs> it's called a guardian angel. No, I'm talking about guardian angel. It's like your shadow. Garden Angel. Gussie, garden angels come from the ground, like carrots. When they first come out of the ground into the garden world, they're very old or hurt or sick. And the longer the angels live there, the younger and smaller they grow, and happier and friendlier they get. When they get little, little, they disappear out of the garden world and into our world. And we trade places. We what? We trade places with our twin. We go there, and our twin comes here. We journey up and up through a long black tunnel, till we reach the garden angel grounds, spread up like carrots, trade back and forth. Does knowing this make you feel a little less lonely, Gussie? Yeah, Bilba. Thanks. Uh, so, so, sorry, uh, uh, I'm, uh, don't, 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 don't get scared, I'm just, I'm just a marvelous mister. I, I just came here to go swimming. Well, yeah, I go, good out, um, good luck, bye. Yeah. Well, are you hurt? 
Uh, no, no. Can you get down? No. Why not? Cause. All right, mummy mouth. That's all you got for me. Good luck. No, 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 no. Don't, don't go. Why not? No life, good scholar. No life so happy and so pleasant as the life of a well-governed angler. So we may say that God never did make a more calm, quiet, innocent recreation than angling. I don't suppose he did. And now I, I, I think it's time for you to repair to your angle rod, which should not be left in the water to fish for itself. Oh well, yeah, is that what we've been doing, huh? Funny, cause I thought I was trying to catch me a steelhead. And you, what are you doing here? I am a fisherman, but I only came here to swim. You're a fisherman? Where's your gear? My gear is at home on the time and hours. But let us say grace and fall to breakfast. What say you, scholar? You can say grace all you want. Just don't fall to breakfast, please. Why not? Because it's going to break your neck before I figure out that lingo of yours. It's Isaac Waltley. I, I mean, Isaac Walters. Oh. I, Isaac Walton? Yes. And what is your name? Call me Gust. Uh, what's, what, what's your name? <laughs> Eddie. Just Eddie. Nice to meet you. Eddie, like, like the swervels in the river, Waddle. I wish. No. Eddie, like my dad, Edwin. You got, you got, you got a bite. The way our guy flaunties, I am wounded. Titus? The Sufi Atar has written one tiny fly which entered the ear of Nimrod, troubled the brain of that idiot for centuries. Please, Gus, spare me Nimrod's fate. Hopeless. I'll never catch one of those beautiful trout. Uh, whoops. 
You just used one of the two words that should be deleted from every true fisherman's vocabulary. Hopeless? No, always and never. Uh, hmm. How's it feel? Eerie, thanks. Don't mention it. Consider it dementioned. <laughs> What's that? It's a long, dull story. If I'm not mistaken, I've seen that look before. Is there a woman in this? Twice she slipped away now. She's uncatchable. Uncatchable as in never? She's not a fish, Titus. Maybe not, but it certainly sounds to me like you're telling the story of the one that got away. To lose the rest of my life without ever seeing the beautiful fisher girl again? That's... It's a pretty miserable prospect. Well, guess there's nothing left to do but just drink till I die. I'll admit, there is no cure for a soul in your condition, but there are three consolations. Okay. One is hope. You may find her again. Yeah, fair chance. Gus, if she's as beautiful as you say she is, She's twice as beautiful as I say she is. She knows your name. She knows the river. She may find you. Yeah, we may grow wings. We might. Okay. What are these other two consolations? Well, you've already put down a healthy dose of the second. The third, however, requires more aptitude. What kind of aptitudes? Philosophical aptitude. I know how to philosophize as well as you know how to fly cast. I think you should get plowed tonight, and tomorrow we begin philosophizing. I just told you I don't know how to philosophize. Well, and I don't know how to fish. Okay. So? So we teach each other. <laughs> what have I got to lose? Your own happiness. Yeah, right. What is that? Is that a imitation of a grasshopper? This is an abstract representation of a fat tourist on a golf course. It's called Bermuda shorts. I like it. What say we migrate to a watering hole a little closer to civilization? To Portland? Sure. The way that goes ahead often looks as if it went back. I just want to go ahead and find Eddie. Come on. Titus? Titus! Yes? Ah. Is your dog? Yes. Well, he's... He's kind of staring at me. So? Does he bite? Can I move? Or why won't he just go away? He... He doesn't bite without cause. But, uh... You should move. You're in Descartes' chair. Just easy there, buddy. I'm just gonna move over to the couch. And Descartes' silly chair will be all fine. Uh, Titus? The dog's in Descartes' chair now. And he's rocking. Should I tell him to get down? No, you shouldn't. The dog is Descartes. Oh. Well. It's amazing. How did you teach him to rock a chair like that? Don't make a stew about it, Gus. You'll only confuse him. Descartes' immediate goal is humanity, as surely as ours is divinity. What? Sorry, I guess I'm just from the Orthodox school, you know? Fido, Rover, Fetch, Roll Over. Well, Gus. Are you ready to fish? 
Fish for what? For happiness. And yeah, where do you fish for that? You believe that stuff? <laughs> I'm not saying, Gus. I believe in the rivers of living water. I believe our souls swim in that water. I believe that Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad are the saver in that water. Of course, I believe that. And why don't you? Bait or fly? Fried or scrambled? Jesus or Muhammad? I mean, does it really make any difference? Does it really matter? Where are all these sages and Buddhas holding up now when we really need them? Well, would you, would you know one if you met one? Come on, Titus. Even Isaac Walton talks about the goodness of the god of nature. I've never seen him, and I've fished in ten states. Whoever, whatever, wherever he is or isn't, if he really wants me to notice him, maybe he should stop being so scarce. All right. Why can't a duffer like me catch a fish? Isn't the answer obvious? Isn't it because at my present level of skill, the fish would have to be so damn dumb and utterly unelusive as to be not worth catching? And how much more elusive should a thing as wondrous as a soul be? Fishermen should be the easiest of men to convince to search for their souls because fishing is nothing but the pursuit of the elusive. How can you be so patient? and searching for fish and so hasty to write off your soul because you can't see it. Hi. Yeah, um, I was looking for a girl named Eddie who works for you. She, she worked at your casting pool at that angling fair a couple months ago. She got a new job. Okay, well, could you maybe tell me, you know, where she's working now? No, this is privacy issues, right? Well, is there a supervisor that I could talk to or something?
think the soul strikes harder early in the morning and late in the evening, kind of like fish. Could be. So how do you suppose I ought to fish for but With a soul pool, I suppose. Where do I get one? Right here's good. That's where you got yours? I got mine here. You got yours there. figure out where the soul pole is. Shall I show you? Can you? I can by analogy, but you'll have to answer a few questions first. Fire away. All right. Where is Rodney, your trusty fishing rod, right now? Um, at this moment, he is hanging on my cabin wall. Who made Rodney from an indistinguishable blank into the singing rod he is today? I did. Yes, and who controls his destiny, decides when he'll hang on the wall, or ride in the back of the pickup truck, or cast for trout, and who will, one day, decide he's worn out and consign him to a funeral pyre. Oh, well. Excellent. Can you get me a couple of cues? Yeah, two of them. Now, who do you suppose created you into the living fisherman you are today? I wish I knew. Excellent. And who controls your destiny? I knew that too. Very good. And who will one day consign your body to a wormy grave? I wish I knew that too. Perfect. Why is that perfect? All I'm saying is, oh, I wish I knew. Come on, don't you want me to say, God does it, or, or my soul does it? Gus, I'm a philosopher. I'm not an evangelist. It's the I wish I knew that is crucial. I mean, to say God did it and then just leave it at that, that's to abandon the search before it's even begun. Believe me, no one's ever discovered any truth by barfing up Sunday school answers to questions. Now, you and I agreed, did we not, that uh, Rodney is oblivious to everything save some weight and varnish. We did. Therefore, does it follow that he is just as oblivious to Gus? Even though Gus is his maker, even though Gus controls his destiny, even though Gus is, let's go ahead and call it, Gus is his essence. Yes, it follows. Then, therefore, is it possible that maybe you and I are just as oblivious to the presence of a creator, just as oblivious to a controller of destiny, just as oblivious to our essence? An essence that wields you and I even more deftly than you wield Rodney. Sure, it's possible. Well, there you have it. Rodney is to Gus, as Gus is to his essence. You name the essence soul, and you, sir, have your soul, Paul. Me. So no matter how hopelessly stupid I am in comparison to my essence or my soul, I still have a profound purpose. I like that, Titus. I like that. Thank you. I swiped it from Plotinus. That's a real nice jack salmon, son. It's not a jack. It's a serum cutthroat. <laughs> what are you 
you doing? I'm getting skunked, goddammit. I've been fishing all day. I haven't even gotten a bounce. I'm plum jinx. Yeah, plum done. What's that? Uh, done. I got here early in the morning. Nary a strike. You come here in 10 seconds. Zabba dabba do. You land a nice jack. So, you uh, know any good tales about this grand sport of ours? Yeah. So, what do you know? If you want to catch a blueback, you're going to need some lighter gear. You have any with you? I guess, uh... I guess we can both use my rod. Yeah, now you're talking! Oh, God damn it! I am sorry. I am okay. sorry. It's really fine. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. It's just, how about you just, just stay up here. Hold on to that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make us something up. Okay. Get yourself, get yourself a little night crawler there. Some clay, right there. Just roll it up like that and smooth it out. What's that invention called? A hostess Twinkie. A hostess Twinkie. Be right. I got one. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Don't lose it. I got it. I got it. Come on. You got him. Look at it. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what do you say, 18 inches? Oh, uh, you tell people that's 24. Love it. Hey, I gotta rush back to town and write this up for tomorrow's paper. Right. Tomorrow's what? Post telegram, Dutch Heinz. The fishing Dutchman? You're Dutch Heinz. Ah, what's your name? I'm, I'm just, just G G Gus. But that's really just a nickname, so I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't use that. You know, I'd like to interview you, Gus. Haven't had a better day's p -p fishing since I lost nine steelhead one morning on the Kilchis. So uh, two winters ago, I was fishing with Fuzz, Buzz. Fuzz Gramsci. Yeah, I, I remember that trip. You wrote about it 12 times. Yeah. So, you want to do an interview? Um... Can, can, can I have one second? Sure. The Times wants to interview me. That idiot's got three-quarter of a million readers. You write about me for weeks and nothing distracts him. Nothing's gonna distract him for months because he's not gonna catch a fish for months. He made Fuzz Grams even rich by endorsement. He endorses me. <laughs> They'll have a thousand followers by the end of the month. Well, what do you say? You wanna do an interview? Listen to this, Caroline. By a stroke of dumb luck, this old dog learned a bag full of tricks from a young buck he bumped into who just might be the finest fisherman this great northwest of ours has seen in many a decade. His friends call him Gus. But he told us this is just a nickname. Okay. My real name is Antoine Chappelle. I'm originally from Palm Springs, California, where I used to manage a, um, <clears throat> a beauty salon. And I would spend my whole day just looking at women's hair. But you know what, Dutch? I thought I was going crazy because I'd be looking at some woman's hair and I'd be imagining 
five pound tippets or algae or something, uh, three pound liters, it doesn't matter. Everything reminded me of, of the river. So finally I said, you know what, Antoine, this can't be healthy. So I pulled up the stakes, I moved to Oregon, and I just started fishing. All day, every day, fishing. And fish he does. With a passion and skill, he claims he acquired using a fly rod out in the deserts around Palm Springs. This dry fishing, as he calls it, is what taught him both the incredible patience and the shamanistic approach to the sport that characterizes him today. Listen, I gotta get back to the paper. Um, what do you say we meet again next week and you tell me some more? Okay, but only if you put a message in the paper for me. Will the girl who ran away from the guy who recited Isaac Walton in the tree please contact Gus on the other river he named? <laughs> He has your pole and your fish and wants to return them. He's totally harmless, but urges you to bring a loaded gun if scared. As long as you come, thank you.
See, I read that I should bring a loaded gun with me, so I took your advice to the letter. I believe you have my pole. Fish. Wait, wait, I, I get the pole and the fish, but what's this? The belly reel goes with the. And how'd you know I'd come for them? I didn't. Everything in the world made me think you wouldn't. There is something I should tell you about that day. I never ran. I never ran away. I was barefoot. So I uh, hid in the woods and I saw you climb above that pole where I hooked the steelhead. And then I stepped on an orange. And this. See, when you came crashing along, you came from upstream uh, and the orange ah, and the orange and this this telescope this telescope we're downstream now i mean <laughs> come on it doesn't take sherlock freaking holmes okay. to, to do okay 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 just and give me just just listen to me for a second spying on me while i was okay oh wait hold no oh, oh, was... wait hold on just give me a second okay okay i admit that is my telescope and, and i'm Sorry that I was spying on you, but really, I was just wandering around looking for a place to swim, and then there was you. This beautiful girl, and you were fishing, and the here goes nothing way you chucked that hazel pole into the water, and the way you dove in and swam after it, I. I just knew that you had some way of looking at things, some way of, of looking at life and the world, which is exactly the way of looking at things that I've been trying to look at things. In my whole life, I've only met two people who have ever looked at things any way close to that way, and that was my little brother and a philosopher who talks to his dog. And with both of them, it was love at first sight, too. But I'm not sorry. Because when you see the most amazing, beautiful thing you've ever seen, you don't think about what's right or polite or tell it to cover up. Because you can't stop looking. You're just, you're just helpless. scholar and <laughs> that God never made a more pure, innocent recreation than angling. I like that, Gus. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What are you doing here? My cabin, shouldn't I be asking you that? No. <laughs> not not here. Here. I'm here. Here. 
alone. Fishing. What are you doing here? Here, here? Here, here. Fishing. You know I saw you in Portland. You did? Where? I saw you rescue that trout from that filthy creek. I guess you could say it made me curious. So I drove up here to see what I could see. And I ran into this little boy who called himself Hemingway. And he immediately launched into this epic tale about a giant fish that he caught with help from a certain superhero named Gus. <laughs> he spent seven minutes underwater before he wrestled the fish with his bare hands. Bullshit. I know, that's what I figured. But I, I could see in his eyes what little Hemingway thought of you. And it made me even more curious. Oh, I must have read that Fishing Dutchman's article like 8,000 times. I knew it was you. And this time I came to see you. And you know what happened next? Yeah. You do. There are two stories of how Nijinsky found his way onto my parents' mantle. The one that landed my father's book deal, and the one that's the truth. Both versions begin the same way, with an epic struggle between a determined young fly fisherman and a giant steelhead. Little did either of them realize that their true nemesis was lurking somewhere downriver. It was my father's worst nightmare. A mere plunker of worms had cost him his prize Nijinsky, 
Whoever this crude interloper was, he would have to be dealt with. You man to man. You must refrain from that pole and defend yourself because one of us is going in that river in search of my fish. So be it, Slicker. But I guarantee God damn to you, it ain't gonna be me. Come on and fight me. Come on and fight me. Come on. As my father watched the woman reel in Nijinsky for herself, he had no idea that she would become his lifetime adversary. She would also become my mom. My parents came to an understanding. The story would be told as maybe it should have been. After all, my father reasoned, she did cause his six pound tippet to snap and he had spent all that time tiring the fish out, making it easy for Ma to just reel him in. So the deal was sealed. H2O would have his story. But never again would they use anything resembling reason in their discussion of the art of angling. Never again would they go fishing together. And never would their marriage vows waver or weaken. Tying is for certain a tedious task, but there's no need to let it get to you like that, my love. Yeah, well, it ain't the fly that's bothering me. Mm -hmm. Gus. I just can't help but feel like we let him go. You cannot keep a person in a place he doesn't want to be. Oh, but can't you at least make it a place that they might want to visit? It's Reefy. What'd you say? When you were a kid, didn't you have, you know, some stuffed animal or a ratty blanket or something that you just absolutely could not go to sleep without? <laughs> I had the grossest pillow that I had to take everywhere. Okay. Well, Bill Bob has Dreefies. Okay. Dreefy is a, um, it's a carefully selected relic of that day's adventure. So there's a different one every night. And just as important as the Dreefy itself is, um, 
is the placement of the Drifi. And if that's altered in, in any way before Bill Bob falls asleep, then it has the same effect of not having one at all. And he doesn't fuss, he doesn't protest, he just doesn't go to sleep. All night long. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> there was one time that the Drifi was a, um, it was a dried up dog turd. And it had, just, it had been bleached white by, you know, the sun and the elements, and and it was shaped exactly like a tiny sleeping polar bear. But Bill Bob said that it was a tiny sleeping polar bear, and that it had been eaten by a dog, and that it had proved indigestible, and that it had been eliminated, and due to its unmentionable experience in the dog, it, it was in a coma. And Bill Bob was going to invoke the powers of the Tooth Fairy to bring it back to life. But Ma just threw the poor polar bear out the window without a question or even a glance at its miraculously sculpted bareness. She didn't believe this story. I guess not. I didn't even sleep all night long. I'm going to Portland tonight. And you. You're staying here. Come on. Come on what? What's the lightest litter you got? Three pound. All right. I'm in mean the rod. Tie it off and bait it. Come on. Will it, uh, will it mess up your plan if I ask? What exactly you're doing? I'm fishing. You do realize there's nothing but Chinook in the water right now, don't you? I know that. Well, this can weigh 50 pounds. I know. So, even if it were possible to hook a Chinook on that leader without breaking it, you couldn't land him even if you played him all night. I know that. But you have to leave before dark. I do. But you don't, Gus. You gotta follow through with the plan.
get out there? Me too. As we walked upriver, I felt like we were on a primordial journey to some forgotten ancient home. The fisherman in me was being unmade. With so light a line, there could be no question of ever bringing this great fish to bay. So there would be no betrayal, no struggle, no sacrifice, no death. There was only a Chinook leading an undone fisherman deeper into the night.
As I watched the sun wake the valley, I felt as though an oldest, greatest, longest lost friend had come to walk the road unseen beside me. And just as quickly that feeling left and blended with the sunlight. I knew from this point on there was no escape and nowhere to go. I was already there. broke we were crossing America you with your stories and me hanging on hands on the wheel and your hair out the window it's counterfeit color that danced in the September Air. When the bow broke, we were flirting with Canada. You said, prove that you love me and live with me there. Today's dream. true love in a picture that you saw somewhere he took her hand they did cartwheels right into the air and then they fell What are you doing here? I'm fishing with Eddie.
People often don't know what they're talking about. But when they talk about love, they really don't know what they're talking about. The one sure thing you can say about love is that there isn't much you can say about it. Not that you shouldn't try. You can make analogies. Love is like a lot of things. One thing it's like is a trout stream. Try to capture a trout stream with a dam, and you get a lake. Try to catch it in a bucket, and you get a bucket of water. Put some under a microscope, and you get a close-up look at some writhing micro cooties. But a trout stream is only a trout stream when it's flowing between its own two banks, at its own pace, in its own sweet way. Follow the empty valley, past the hills, to the marshes of the estuary, calm and peaceful river. In the light of the moon, with the river, I do run in the hope that one day I will die beneath the ocean. And that this river. All of the time, baby, go fishing too. I bet your life for your sweet wife are gonna catch more fish than you. Oh, baby, fish bite if you got good bait. Here's a little tip I would like to relate. A many fish bite if you got good bait. Oh, I'm a go fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing and my baby going fishing too. Good bait. 
Here's a little tip I would like to relate A mini fish bite If you got good bait Oh, I'm going fishing Yes, I'm going fishing And my baby going fishing too 